Pokemon market right now is going a bit crazy with a lot of the Scarlet and Violet era stuff just keeps going up and up and up. One of the biggest losers and the biggest winners of the past, well, couple of weeks or so. Well, today we take a look at TCG Player and a really interesting article of the biggest shakeups in the market right now. Some of them are pretty crazy. Let's go and check them out. All right, so here we have it, the biggest Pokemon movers and shakers of the week. Stuff is happening thick and fast, really, in the Pokemon market, not just in the Scarlet and Violet era, but pretty much across the board, of course. And you know, as you can see here, you've got the picture of the Greninja, which we know is doing crazy stuff. And yeah, you know, Shroud of Fable has just come out. And in my opinion, I think it's a really poor sale. I'm going to be doing a video about it uh, soon. I think it's 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 pretty weak. It is pretty weak. But the rest of Skull and Violet Era has just been doing really well. Like, incredibly well. You know, we've got Stellar Crown literally around the corner. Uh, Twilight Masquerade is still fresh in everyone's mind of how great Greninja is. There's just so much stuff going on, right? So, speaking of the Greninja, we're starting off $300 for this big boy. Now, here's the interesting thing. Uh, this is kind of, at the moment... This era's Moonbrion. Uh, whether or not it will continue to be that way in the future, time will tell. I mean, I kind of compared this to the Blaziken from Chilling Rain. Like, it'll be on that same level as the Blaziken. I mean, it's already doing way better than the Blaziken was uh, when the Blaziken came out, right? It took a while for the Blaziken to get up to the $300 mark. It even took the Moonbrion, I'm pretty sure, it took the Moonbrion even longer than the Greninja to get to the $300 mark. So the fact is this is already $300 in the past month. We've just seen it just, just go absolutely crazy. You know, it is just an incredible looking card. It really, really is. So we have here already the most expensive chase card in the set. Rainbow Greninja is still climbing in price. Another strong week has an all time market high of $295. Of course, on TCG Play, you got to take everything with a pinch of salt. Uh, we've been doing a lot of videos recently where we've seen how easily the market is manipulated on TCG Player compared to the actual rest of the actual market price. So you always got to take it with a giant pinch of salt. And I've kind of realized that, like, as we go on, you really got to look around at prices. Because TCG Player, if it's the only source, in my opinion, it's not to be trusted. You got to look around. You really do. So in here, we've got in the past week, Greninja has made another big leap. Going from about $250 to nearly $300. It's just absolutely insane, right? The rest of the set has some incredible cards. It even talks about some of the others, like for the Carmine. Here we go. So it has the Carmine, the Perrin, which we've just seen there, um, doing very well, are both over $75. The EV uh, and the Kieran, which is, again, really, really impressive. They're both over $50. This set is just crushing things out of the park. It really is. Moving on from the most recent set, we're going to go to a fairly old modern set, Cosmic Eclipse. So we're looking at the Solgaleo and Lunala GX Rainbow. This card has jumped up quite a bit, literally, over the past month. Holy smokes, this card's gone from $54. Oh, okay, it's got about like $5. It sounds like a lot. I guess if it's been like going down, having a jump like that is actually quite significant. Go over the last six months, it's the highest it's ever been. In the last six months, go back a year, and it's pretty much where it was a year ago. So okay, that's actually, you know, a pretty substantial jump. You know, and it's not like hundreds of dollars which we just looked at it is still a pretty substantial jump typically the shakers list is populated by illustration rares and the alternate art cards that preceded the rarities official introduction that's where we see most of the coolest full arts and that helps sell the cards to collectors for years to come but for the solgaleo and lunala gx which is a beautiful stunning card here we have a secret rare making moves which is always pretty good this isn't even the most expensive print of the card in the set. That goes to the, I think there's an alt art version. Yeah, the alt art version, which is amazing. Um, that one goes from $53 to $70 market price. Look, Cosmic is getting super expensive. Like anything Sun and Moon, is like pack-wise, price-wise, it's just going absolutely crazy. So yeah, I expect you know slow, steady movements on a lot of the cards. Not the weird boom that we saw last year, like we saw with the Sword and Shadow Arts this year. It's just unnatural growth whereas you know uh these steady growth like here is, is kind of what you know why i expect to be then we're on to the lugia v star now this used to be i don't know if it still is but this was a you know really highly playable card in the tcg i did see a lot of lugia decks going around we're looking around about four dollars it's still not too bad to be honest for a regular v star we go back over the past year and it has fallen from its highs of nearly 12 to 13 dollars which is actually quite a bit you know silver tempest getting more expensive and some of the playable cards are dropping in value. 
So it has here, Lugia has been on a real journey this year. Silver Templates released back in November 2022. Well, time's gone quick. And Lugia's printings were at the forefront from the start. Absolutely. Lugia V-Star came out of the gates at $10 before settling to its print price you'd expect for the ultra rare around $3. But a run at the beginning of the year pushed Lugia all the way to over $10 before crashing nearly as hard on the way back down to $3 as low earlier this month. There's a lot to unpack if you're a Pokemon historian, but speaking, but speaking more plainly, I can say that it looks like Lugia V-Star found its floor at $3 because it's begun to softly climb again. It's moved from $3 to 6 for near mint copies here on TCG Player. And while I'm not sure you'll see this back up to $15 anytime soon, it is clearly found at the bottom and should now begin a natural slow climb back up. Meanwhile, the uh, Lugia V, which is the alt art from Silver Tempest, has climbed as well, going from 164 to 175. So very st slow, steady growth, which has come to be expected. Next up, we've got the Charmeleon from 151, the illustration rare. I mean, it's been steady climbing over the past three months. I mean, we've seen that with a lot of 151 illustration rares. They're actually holding quite well. You know, some of them are actually going up, but overall they're doing reasonably good. We have here the Charmeleon is closer to setting at an all-time high than a new price floor. In fact, it did just last week with the nearly year-old card hitting a market price high of $29. It has cooled off slightly since then, actually putting it into negative territory this week as it stabilized at $24. But it looks like this is the first of what could be many price jumps as the new baseline for this Charmeleon is now close to $25 than the 50 to 20 it was to this point now the one thing i will say with 151 is when there's more that are coming at the end of the year expect a lot of these prices to fall i, I would expect a lot of them you know there's booster bundles coming mini tins etbs collection boxes there's gonna be a lot of 151 coming at the end of the year so i do expect a lot of these to fall maybe not by much but i do expect them to fall then we have the horsey from shrouded fable so shrouded fable like i say it's kind of a weak set not exactly the most exciting but it is most definitely got some nice cards but it's just not the best so we have the horsey here and of course this card has recently come out and i think 15 dollars for an illust regular illustration rare is pretty good the etbs are yet to come out though so you got, you got to take like the most of shrouded fable with a pinch of salt because once the etbs come out in the us uh, which i believe is like this week or next week i do expect them to start falling which is uh, you know okay i mean it's kind of a weak set in my opinion while everything else has predictably fallen in price from the special set release the horsey is just comfortably lounging on the bed of seaweed while its price goes up rather than going down it climbed from 11 dollars to 15 dollars in the past week that's pretty good in the past week and there's a lot of potential for the illustration rare printing and here's the thing i think there's going to be some illustration rares in shroud of fable that's going to hold pretty well the the pull rate seems to be quite tough, but I do expect some of the cards actually to, you know, somewhat hold good value, like the Horsey and cards like that. I mean, the Special Illustration Resin set are pretty weak. I think the, I think the set overall is pretty weak. There's some good cards like the Persian, which I think is going to do very well as well. You know, when we look at some of these card prices, we look at the Cassiopeia, for instance. This is the biggest card in Shroud of Fable. This one has fallen. Well, this one's fallen quite a bit. 60% from its pre-order price. You know, it's just one of these things, right? You know, it was $200, now down to 80 yeah, and I think we're going to continue seeing this. Once the ETBs hit, this card's going to continue to fall. So there's one thing to look out for. Mainly because it's just not a great set, in my opinion. Yes, the port is quite tough. But I think, you know, with ETBs coming out, yeah, more packs available, it's going to continue to drop. Speaking of climbers, there's another climber. You've got the Houndoom as well from Shroud of Fable. This one's doing very well. This one's one of my favorite cards in the set. $25. This one's actually jumped up. So this one's gone from $6 to it's gained 330% which is absolutely crazy. It is such a gorgeous looking card. So that's one thing to really, really look out for. And like I said, I think the illustration rares in this set are key. I really, really do. Another great illustration rare is the Dusk Uh This one's a beautiful card. They put it in the Japanese version, but not so much in Shroud of Fable just yet. But again, this one, $25 or $26 for an illustration rare is incredibly strong. And this card, you know, it, it went down to 21. It's now trickling back up. Doing relatively well. I think, like I say, the power is in the illustration rares. SIRs, there's not that many in the set. It's quite a small set. But they're just not really doing well. They might bounce back over time. You know, especially they are really tough. But but hopefully some of the big cards and especially illustration rares will carry this set. So you have it, guys. Those are just some shakeups in the past week or so. Really interesting. You know, you're going to have like the Greninja doing incredibly well. 
Could it be the next Moonbrion? You know, it's showing strength. It really is. Personally, I wouldn't pick it up at $300. I think it will drop, especially when more Twilight Masquerade hits the shelves later on this year. But I don't think it will drop a huge amount. I really don't. The pull rates are incredibly tough. Uh, it kind of has this aura about it. Kind of like the magic art where everybody wants it. And I think it'll do very well. I think it will, I think it will hold its value. I don't know whether it's like Umbreon levels, but it's definitely going to hold its value. Um, it might drop a bit, but it's going to be the biggest card at the moment in the Scarlet and Violet era quite quite easily. So I'm quite interested. Shroud of Fable, pretty poor start, but good, strong illustration res, as we've seen with a 330% increase in Houndoom, uh, which is really, really interesting. And then 151, you know, we've been seeing a lot of these illustration res again, doing relatively well, uh, which is very, very important, even though there's some more coming at the end of the year, which is much, much needed. If you made this far to the video and you've enjoyed it, make sure to smash the like button and make sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments of the shakeups over the past week. Do you think the Greninja is the new Moonbrion? Do you think it's worth picking up? And what do you think about these upcoming reprints of sets? Is it needed? Is it not needed? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. But that is it for me, guys, in today's video. For much more Pokemon content, make sure to click the video on the screen. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But as always, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the legends, and I'll see you in the next one.